Welcome to Texan Math. Today we're taking a look at the STAR end of course exam for Algebra 1, item number 38. Let's read the item. A teacher collected data on 20 students for two different quizzes. The scatter plot below shows the relationship between the number of points scored on quiz 1 and the number of points scored on quiz 2. Which statement describes the data? F. The number of points scored on quiz 2 was less than the number of points scored on quiz 1 for any student who scored at least 50 points on quiz 1. The number of points scored on quiz 2 was greater than the number of points scored on quiz 1 for any student who scored 50 or fewer points on quiz 1. The number of points scored on quiz 2 was greater than the number of points scored on quiz 1 for any student who scored at least 50 points on quiz 1. And then finally, answer choice J, the number of points scored on quiz 2 was less than the number of points scored on quiz 1 for any student who scored 50 or fewer points on quiz 1. Wow, so uh, you probably already have figured out why a lot of students missed this one. This was number 38 on the test, of course, and 37% of the students got it correct. Uh, that means 63% got it wrong, and I have a feeling there were students that skipped this problem simply because of the length of the wording. It's very wordy. Um, it's not particularly challenging if you take your time on the item. STAR is a time test, so that is a concern for some students that they, oh, they'll, they don't want to take too long on one item because it may cause them to run out of time. But in general, I would say time is not an issue for most students who take STAR. Uh, it's unlikely that spending a little extra time on this problem would cause you to, you know, lower your your score substantially. And since the answer is actually pretty easy to find, I would recommend doing this one. I really would. Even though it takes the time, I would recommend doing it. Okay, so all of these problems are talking about the number of points scored for any student. So it basically means you really have to analyze any student. You have to analyze every point that's in this graph. And um, you could do it on the graph itself. But apparently that didn't work so well because I suspect that's how a lot of students did this problem is they just analyzed it on the graph. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create here a table of order pairs for every point in this table. I mean every point in this graph. There's quite a few, uh, but I think we can knock it out pretty quick if we go ahead and just do that. So I'm going to do quiz one, quiz two. I'll do Q1, Q2 for my two, my two um, uh, quizzes. So here you'll notice the quiz one is along the horizontal, so I'm using that like my X coordinate or my X variable. And then my quiz two, I'm using that for my Y variable here. So let's go ahead and take each order pair. And a strategy I like to use when I'm writing order pairs from a graph is to put a little X on each one as I go so that I don't duplicate a point. So going from left to right, I'm going to start here because that's the farthest one to the left. The X coordinate is 25 and the Y coordinate is 20. So I have 20, 5, 20. This next order pair is 30, 10. Then just above it is 30, 25. And I guess it's 25. You can't tell for sure, but it's somewhere in, in the middle. So I'll just say 25 for that one. The next order pair is 35, 30. Now, if you wanted to, if you're not real confident in graphing order pairs or naming their, or their coordinates, you could enter these into the graphing calculator. Uh, and I know students that always do it. So if you want to do that, you, you certainly may. But I'm going to go ahead and just keep going by hand here. 40, 30, because you could actually graph it uh, and check your, uh-oh, look what I just did. 40, 30, not 43. 40, 30. And then 50, 35, 50, 40, 50, 45, 
Okay, we've done all these. So let me make sure I've got them all. 2520, 3010, 3025, 3530, 4030, 5030, 5040, and 5055. Okay, I've got all those. Uh, now let's keep going. This one is 5560. I'm going to cross it out. This one is 60, 65. This one is 60, 70. This one is 70, 75. This one is 70, 85. This one is 7580. This one is 7595. Looks like I'm going to extend this down a little bit. This one is, uh oh, already did 7595. I need to cross that one out. This one is 8090. This one is 8100. This one is 8090. This one is 9595. And then finally, I've got 100, 100. Now, you may already be able to eliminate some of these answers, but I'm just going to go through in order, read the question, and use this table to help answer that question or determine if that question or that statement is a, is a true statement. Let's start with F. The number of points scored on quiz two was less than, so that's kind of a key word. I think I'll, I'll underline that, was less than the number of points scored on quiz one for any student he scored at least 50 points well if they scored at least 50 points that means we're talking about 50 points on quiz one would be from here down if they scored at least 50 points on quiz one that's from here down from 50 all the way to the end uh, if you're looking at the quiz one, which is the first column. So the question is, did the number of points scored on quiz two, was that less than the number of points scored on quiz one? Okay, so the quiz two, well, here it is, less. 35 is less than quiz one. 40 is less. 45 is less. Uh, but wait a minute, right here, 60 is not less. And it says for any student. So I've already got an exception right there at the 60. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out F as a possibility. Now I'm going to choose a different color pencil here so I don't get mixed up. It says the number of points scored on quiz 2 was greater than the number of points scored on quiz 1 for any student who scored 50 or fewer points. Okay, 50 or fewer points on quiz one. Well, let's see. That's going to be right here. 50 or fewer points on quiz one. So we're only looking at those order pairs. Let's see if that's true. The number of points on quiz two was greater than. So quiz two should be greater than quiz one. Well, I've already got an exception right here. 20 is not greater than 25. So that means G is not a correct answer. All right, well, I've knocked out two. Let's go on to H. The number of points scored on quiz two was greater than the number of points scored on quiz one. All right, well, I need another color. Let's see, what have I not used? Uh, I haven't used blue. 
let's see, quiz two was greater than the number of points scored on quiz one. For any student who scored 50, at least 50 points on quiz one, well, I've already highlighted that, this color, so I'm going to use that again, this pink color. So you see I have these ordered pairs that I'm looking at. So it says quiz two was greater than quiz one. Well, I can see right here, quiz two, 35 is not greater than 50. In fact, I don't think quiz two, well, yeah, it is in a few spots. It is greater, but it's not right there. So that means H is incorrect, which leaves me with J. So I now know J is correct, but before I choose it, I want to double check anyway. So let's check. The number of points scored on quiz two was less than the number of points scored on quiz one for any student who scored 50 or fewer points. Well, I've already highlighted that in yellow. 50 or fewer points on quiz one. So I'm only looking at these order pairs here at the top of the table. Now, is it true? Did all these students score less? 20 is less than 25. Yes. 10 is less than 30. Yes. 25 is less than 30. 30 is less than 35, 30 is less than 40, 35 is less than 50, 50 is less than, or 40 is less than 50, and 45 is less than 50. Every one of those worked. So it took us a while because there's a lot to look at. But it's clear now that J is the correct answer. The number of points scored on quiz two was less than the number of points scored on quiz one for any student who scored. 50 or fewer points on quiz one.